Swamiji, Yogananda often spoke of Christianity versus churchianity. Would you like to talk a little bit about that? Yes. Churchianity is taking the divine teachings and making an institution out of them. As soon as you formalize something, then you come down from the abstraction, which is the truth. But the trouble with churchianity is that it places church convenience ahead of truth. In other words, it's not convenient for um, the devotee to not come to church and pay f into the church to keep the church going. Therefore, they um, make sure that he comes to church, so that it is a hierarchy, that he um, can't, he can only live one lifetime because you don't know what he'll do after that. So you have to control him now. Churchianity is all based on control. And ch Christianity is the truth that God is everywhere. And this is why the teachings of Jesus, when they become, became formalized, they be institutionalized, they became limited. The truth cannot be confined by a church. The truth cannot be confined by an institution. So it, it isn't a matter of the physical edifice of a church. You can have a physical edifice, but you mustn't make that your uh, central reality. It's not calcifying the teaching. That's why I think it's better to have small churches so you don't have so much need for money that you have to place everything else uh, subservient to that need. Swamiji, in the early days of Christianity becoming a religion, there were small communities. Can you touch on them? Did Christ advocate that sort of thing? Well, we don't know that he did because there's nothing in the Gospels. But the fact that it happened immediately afterwards makes one think that he did, that he must have recommended it. Um, it's interesting how um, what Yogananda is doing was exactly what they did. I, yeah. There were small communities before the time of Christ, too. I didn't know if there were. In Qumran and other places like that in the whole I don't region. know. I, no, I don't know enough about that. Swami, um, touching on the churchianity question or concept, um, does bringing a group of people together for a spiritual or religious purpose automatically begin to calcify it? Well, human beings tend to ossify things. <laughs> That's just human nature. I know in starting Ananda, I've done my best to not let that happen. I know it's bound to happen in time. It's just the, the way things are. But I've tried to, first, first of all, I've not appointed anybody as a leader who wanted to be a leader. Secondly, I've made every community autonomous. So there's no central office, which would become like the Vatican. And there's no hierarchy of people going down like in an army or in the church. I've tried to avoid all that. But I know that human nature is human nature, and you can't change that fact. So what will happen in the future, I don't know. I do know that for now, there is a great deal of freedom, and everybody has a say. Swami, um, can you explain the, uh, the teaching or the phrase that Christ offered, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them, or amongst well, them? This is what Yogananda talked of, too. The importance of group magnetism. As you get people together, um, meditating together, that in, in my name, doesn't mean taking his name. It means in attunement with his, with his consciousness. When you get a group of people, there's a growing magnetism that the individual can't create. <coughs> Swamiji, how do we become more attuned to that consciousness? Well, we have to 
I mean, you're asking the spiritual life. So start the spiritual life and thinking of God and serving other people, all those things. One thing, of course, is good putting your mind here. It's an interesting thing. I've, I've often wondered what is there about this thing between the eyebrows? But of course, it's not the eyebrows, it's not the forehead, it's the frontal lobe of the brain behind the forehead. And this particular point of the frontal lobe of the brain is that point at which the superconsciousness exists. It's also the seat of discrimination of intellect and uh, but the main thing is superconsciousness. The next thing is the heart. When you can raise your heart and direct its energy toward the brain, then um, you're uniting feeling and reason in the most harmonious way. The attunement that uh, you've talked about in regard to the arts, for example, if you want to be an artist, mix with other artists. Right. So that and mix with successful artists, not with failures. Maybe if you want to be a businessman, mix with successful businessmen. If you want to be a saint, mix with spiritual people. And the more spiritual they are, the better it is. People tend to draw from each other their magnetism. It's important, therefore, to mix with the best in that field. And so by living with other people who are meditating and seeking God... It's definitely helpful. Very helpful. Swami, what earlier um, from that quotation, in my name, what is God's name? What does that, what does that term mean? Actually, the name of God is Om. It's the vibration of, of the... When God created the universe, he created vibration. On the surface of his unmoving consciousness, there were waves, you could put it that way. And that vibration emits a sound. Wherever there's vibration, there's light and there's sound. And so the name of God truly is not Jehovah, it's not Allah, it's not Brahma, it's Om. And Om is only an approximation, a human thing. The truth is that you can't say the name of God. It's a vibration that you hear and commune with. When you go to commune with it, meditate on the sound in your right ear. Call Om here, listen in the right ear. And actually, ph physiologists have discovered that there is a spot in the brain above the right ear that, uh, if stimulated, creates psychic experiences. So you, it's not the outer ear, it's the inner power of hearing that you're using. But when you hear that sound, then try to bring it over to the left ear, try to become emerged into it. Finally, you find your whole body vibrating with that sound. And then gradually, as you concentrate on that, that vibration moves outward and becomes one with all vibration. Then there's a further step that you begin to feel the Christ consciousness in every atom of your body. So that at the center of the vibration, when you have movement like this, there's always that central point. That is the point of Christ consciousness, where the spirit beyond creation reflected in every atom of creation, that is Christ consciousness. So first you, f you feel that absolute freedom from vibration at the center of vibration in your own body. Then you expand outward with it and you find the Christ consciousness in all creation. Then you go beyond that to the spirit beyond creation. This is a trinity, three in one and one in three, Om Tat Sat, or Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But uh, the, there's no difference between the two or between the three. Can you say between three, among the three? <laughs> and uh, there's no difference there because it's all part of the same reality in different aspects. Swamiji, uh, the Holy Spirit is also sometimes referred to as the comforter. What does that That's mean? because when you hear that sound, it's very comforting. 
you all I know that Yogananda said if you can be an Om nothing can touch you and one time Dr. Lewis was out on the sound on uh, outside Martha's Vineyard in a sailboat and uh, all of a sudden a great storm came up and he was worried because the boat was uh, he was afraid it would be flooded and that they'd drown and he remembered what Yogananda had said and so he the light is also a manifestation of Om so he concentrated deeply on the inner light and he felt completely secure and when he came home people were so relieved to see him and Yogananda he got in his got in to his house and just as he came in the house the phone rang Yogananda was on the other end and he said you came pretty near getting wet didn't you doctor <laughs> <laughs> but what had happened was that he had been with a, a disciple and he was reading a story of Joseph Conrad on the sea and then he suddenly said doctor's in trouble in serious trouble I say I'll tell you and uh, he knew what was happening but it was the 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 comforter is that when you feel that sound you 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 know you're protected it's not only that all wisdom is contained in that sound all power is contained in that sound you can have tremendous ecstasy in that sound everything you're looking for is there just because it's the whole universe there is the internal sound which draws you inward toward God is the external sound which is the satanic force pushing you away and when you tune into that Om the sound that you hear takes you inward toward God it's one of the best ways to meditate to um, to find God is, is it also the Divine Mother is that that is the Divine Mother aspect of God she gave birth to everything and uh, you find her love her bliss everything is in that sound so you've got the father is the infinite spirit beyond creation the mother does does the housework the father is sort of withdrawn from what happens in the family <laughs> the mother is busy in the family and then there's the son which is the Christ consciousness it's all beautiful symbolic but it's got his counterpart in this realm too where the mother does the housework the father isn't that involved with with the daily things and then the children <laughs>